I wonder what you and your family talk about around the dinner table. I wonder if you talk about sports or politics or death or... Whoa, what? Death? Nobody talks about death! It's one of those agreements we kind of socially have with one another. We, we just don't talk about it. In fact, in some ways, it's one of those agreements that we actually make with death ourselves, isn't it? It's like, I won't talk about you if you won't kill me today. And, you know, some of you are already right now at the beginning of this devotion thinking, I'm going to turn this off because he just mentioned the D word. Nobody wants to talk about death. But the reality is death is all around us. And this coronavirus pandemic has really reminded us that we have this invisible enemy, this shadow that follows us everywhere we go and against whom we are powerless. Now, I know we have incredible technology, incredible NHS staff who are working incredibly hard to beat the coronavirus. But here's the thing. Even if we eventually beat the coronavirus, we won't beat death. It'll just kill us another way. And, and that's a very disturbing thought. And that's one of the reasons why we don't talk about it very much. We, we kind of push it away. And it, it's kind of silly, really, because death doesn't care about our thoughts or our opinions or our plans. It doesn't care about our age. It doesn't care that, care that much about whether we are healthy or whether we are sick. Because this pandemic has shown that that this virus, coronavirus, has taken young and old, it's taken healthy and unhealthy, it's taken tall and short and black and white. It, it really is no discriminator of persons. Death is a reality that one in one people face. And so I wanted to just start off our devotions this week by acknowledging the fact that we can't cheat death. As a church, we've been praying recently about what God has for us in the future. We've been praying about how we can serve our community. And in one of our pre recent prayer meetings, somebody shared some verses that are found in the book of Isaiah. And it's a stark warning to God's people not to avoid a subject that affects everyone. And that one of the ways that we can speak hope and life into our community is by speaking about the fact that death can be defeated, but not by us. See, these, these words are found in Isaiah chapter 28. It says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. The one who relies on it will never be stricken with panic. And then it gives the opposite, the, the alternative to those who rely on this stone. It says, Your agreement with the realm of the dead will not stand. When the overwhelming scourge sweeps by, you will be beaten down by it. As often as it comes, it will carry you away. Morning after morning, and day and by day and by night, it will sweep through. The understanding of this message will bring sheer terror. It is a frightening thing, isn't it? Thinking about how little control we have over death. Since we're facing death on a daily basis at the moment, I thought I would take this week to really dig a little deeper into this passage to find the hope that is actually contained within. Maybe up to now you thought, oh, this sounds depressing, but I can assure you this will not be a week of depressing devotions. This will be a week where we find uh, the, the incredible truth about the one plan of salvation that we can rely on, about the one stone that is a sure foundation against this scourge that sweeps through. This is a story about our efforts to cheat death. But this is also a story about God's plan of salvation, something that God is doing that will not fail. He says, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. The one who relies on it will never be stricken with panic. You know, some people are so paralyzed by the fear of death that they, they almost don't live their life to the full. Other people are so reckless with their lives because they believe death will not come for them today. And either of those extremes is bad. But somewhere in the middle where we do not live in a constant fear of death, and yet we acknowledge the fact one day we will die and that I should not waste my life, that's a more healthy place to be. That is a more uh, God-centered Christian place to be as well. And if you're just exploring faith and you're, you're wondering what all of this is about, I just want to tell you, you, you'll never outrun death. We need a plan of salvation from death itself. And that 
is the work of the author of life, the one who sent his son Jesus to conquer death once and for all, that even though we die, we might still live. I hope you'll join me this week as we explore these hopeful themes. Until then, I'd like to challenge you to reflect a little bit about the value of your life, about not wasting it, about the fact that if you can't cheat death, if you can't get away from it, you need to make sure that you do not waste your life. You need to make sure that it matters, that it counts, that you're pursuing a purpose bigger than yourself. You need to make sure that you are right with God. And maybe you're watching this devotion and you wouldn't consider yourself to be a person of faith yet. I just want to encourage you to keep exploring because there is nothing more important in this life than understanding what goes beyond it, than understanding its meaning and its purpose. And those are questions that cannot be answered for you by science or by history. Those are questions that can only be answered by faith. So please keep exploring. Explore with me this week. Just find out a little bit more about the message that Christians have of hope in a dark time like this. One who conquered death itself.